we cannot expect half a million patients a year to come into City Road. It would be logistically impossible. It would also be quite expensive for patients, which is why over 20 years ago, my predecessor but one uh, opened our first um, satellite in Northwick Park. And we have now grown to 23 sites. We've, we've doubled the number of sites in the past six years, which would suggest that in the current health economic environment in the NHS, we're, we're getting something right. Some people would say small is beautiful and patients would rather go to a small clinic than a bustling hospital. But you're about to build a brand new hospital. Is that so that you can take in more patients or is it for research purposes? The purpose of the new, new, of the new, new hospital building is to link uh, high quality service delivery of care to patients in a, in a, in a user friendly fashion, to link that with research into currently blinding and dis visually disabling conditions and also to link it with uh, educating the next generation of ophthalmic professionals. Uh, there's a big demand for multidisciplinary education in ophthalmology as in all other branches of medicine. So you cannot take service delivery on its own. Uh, we've got to link it with, with, with the research, which is why we're heavily involved with UCL. Specifically, we're involved with the Institute of Ophthalmology, which is part of UCL. They currently share the City Road site with us, and the plan is for them to move uh, to, the, to a new site in the, Kings, in the St Pancras area um, in some years' time. And obviously you're a very successful hospital, you've, you've got a surplus of money, but you're going to need more. What sort of measures are you going to have to take in order to raise the necessary funds? Well, we'll be, we will obviously in the fullness of time, uh, sell the current City Road site. Uh, we are in active negotiations with UCL about the contribution that they will make because they're, they're very keen to support this um, research and service delivery. Uh, and we will also be, I'm afraid, asking our patients um, and the public to um, donate uh, to building this new institution. We'll be stressing that the main purpose of the new building is to combine service delivery, research and education. And it's not the building itself that we're raising money for. We're raising money for the work that uh, educated teams of clinicians will do in the building, be it research to reduce the impact of blindness on the aging population, be it, be it education to train the next generation of healthcare professionals, or be it um, innovating and developing new ways of actually delivering the care to patients. This country, the UK, is very good at bright ideas, lots of innovations, but we're not always fantastic at actually implementing and delivering and scaling up bright ideas. And we're hoping that if we keep the three things together, the education, the research, and the service delivery adjacent to each other, we will, uh, we will speed the sort of introduction of new ideas into a deliverable, f and into a form that is deliverable to patients. How difficult a cultural change is it going to be in this country, getting um, members of the NHS to be happy with delivering innovative change and new working practices, and also patients understanding that they are going to have to support health innovation because it's been free forever, hasn't it? Yes, and we, we, the UK, like every other developed country in the world, is struggling with this conundrum at the moment, and frankly, from my from my co speaking to colleagues abroad, no country is finding it easy. Um, my own view is that there, are, there is scope for change. We can deliver things more efficiently. Some things do need less doing. S uh, education will certainly allow patients to look after themselves significantly better, or at least make a choice about it. And there, is, there are technological efficiencies in that we can do procedures simpler and safer and quicker if, if we really look, look at the detail of how they're done. The other issue that comes up, and this is where you're really into change, is deciding who does what, and who, what groups of people can be safely trained to do what procedures. It's interesting that in 2008, uh, we had the beginnings of an effective cure for age-related macular, for the, uh, an effective cure, or an effective treatment for age-related macular degeneration, the wet form of age-related neovascular, neovascularization, which causes central visual loss in significant numbers of people over 70. 
uh, which means they lose their independence because they cannot drive, they can't read easily, and they, and they, cannot, they cannot work well. With an ageing population, we have a huge responsibility to find an effective cure for age-related macular degeneration, glaucoma, and for um, conditions like diabetic retinopathy. All of those conditions require new research, and this building will allow us to put, will, is, will, design, will give a large number of patients access to our newly developed research. The other thing is about delivery. We could not have delivered the care that patients, that pa patients with age rate generation need if we hadn't changed the way we work. These patients with age rate generation require regular injections into the eye once a month for up to two or three years. We had not got, and the UK had not got, the doctors to, to, to cope with this increased load, which is why we broke new ground by training, uh, by training nurses to give these injections. And this was quite a challenge, and I consider myself a, having fought some battles on this. Reassuring, we had to reassure the nursing profession that it was safe and, and they could do it confidently and competently. We had to reassure other doctors that this was not a threat to their livelihood. We had to re reassure uh, the professional bodies of the Royal College of Ophthalmologists and, and reassure our commissioners and our regulators that this was a safe change. And I think we've achieved that and certainly in the last six months, half of all injections for macular degeneration in Moorfields were delivered by nurses. And that's about, that's about 10,000 injections, which we would have great difficulty delivering if we hadn't used nurses. Uh, the UK, and, and it, the, the proof of the pudding is in the fact that a lot of other eye units in the UK are now training nurses to give injections, and it is slowly spreading beyond, Europe, beyond England into Holland and in Sweden. Uh, it has not been used in North America yet. In just one sentence, Declan, which hmm. is an impossible question that I've task force you to do, in one sentence, could you sell the magic of more fields to those who, private or just patients, who might contribute to your fund? Why should they do it? Hmm. Good question. Thank you. Thank you for asking me that. My challenge for the next week. I think we. I think we can persuade patients to contribute because there's a lot of a lot of current treatments, and a lot of a lot there are a lot of conditions are currently not as are not treatable. Uh, there must be a better way to to preserve vision in macular degeneration, giving giving you an injection once a month into your eye. And I think a lot of patients realise this and realise that there is a, there's a lot more that needs to be done. And we mustn't, as a profession or as, or as a country, be satisfied with the current level of care we give patients. We must constantly strive to improve it. And that's, that's why I'm confident that a lot of people will be prepared to put their hands in their pockets um, to help us build a new Moorfields.